Game Day Nation, what it do? It's your man, 50 Grand, Wally Pitt, back with another episode of the HBCU Game Day Fast Break on Aspire TV. Now, I gave Tolly Carter a week off from his hosting duties because I had to catch up with the reigning CIAA Player of the Year, the all-time leader in points and assists for Livingstone College, and when we talking about ballers from Raleigh, North Carolina, right up there with the P.J. Tuckers and the John Walls, is CIAA legend Roger Ray. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee, and a disagreement. Now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I'll be cooking up because then they think we be even. But I know, look, this this, so I never seen it now. Jim getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What my team is the strongest, and we crush the competitors. Uh. Game over. So here he is, the reigning CIAA player of the year, Roger Ray. Roger, what's been good with you, man? What's up with you, Ali? Hey, I can't call it. I can't call it. So, uh, get the fans a little update, man. Uh, what you've been up to these last, you know, this last year or so, really, since uh, since the CIAA tournament? Uh, I mean, just training, man. I've uh, been in L.A. Went to L.A. first for pre-draft, then Vegas with Impact. Then I came back home, spent time with my little brother, saw my little brother through his um, college process, you know, picking the school and stuff. So, you know, say so just training, man, getting it in for the last 10, 11 months, so ever, you know, saying, just waiting on the opportunity, just going hard. Yeah, and you know, uh, giving people a, a behind the scenes, you know, we shot uh, the first part of Garage Made that we shot really two summers ago, the summer before your senior year. And you know, uh, Ray had me in the drop top BM up and down 85. I mean, <laughs> we spent the whole day together, bro. What was it like uh, for you going into your senior year? You know, you had you had the games goons and Winston on your back on social media. You know, you were looked at as being the number one guy. What was it like going into your senior year with all that pressure that you had had on you? Oh, uh, it was fun. I mean, I already knew what it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying, the previous years, it, it was it was fun, you know what I'm saying, getting being having that target on my back. I liked it. It made me better as a player. I was understand if I can go up against two, three guys every night, then one player ain't no no big deal. And then having you there, you know what I'm saying, showing me love and just just the fact that, you know, I went to like seven different high schools, so I decided to stay. I was supposed to go to NC State. You know, so I had a chance to leave to go to NC State or other D1 opportunities, but I stayed and just grinded out, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? HBCU, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to hold it down for my people. So, nah, it, it was a great experience. You already know, it's always turning in Winston, but, you know, once the game get going, hey, all that get out of the way. And, you know, it's crazy because um, I found out about you from when I was shooting a special with Ramel Belfield. And that was in like 2018. And you know, we shot the whole special similar to, to what you and I did. I spent the whole day with him in, in um, Salisbury, we kicked it. And at the end, I was like, yeah, man, I'm trying to do one of these every year. And he was like, man, we got this sophomore on our team, Roger Ray. And he kind of he kind of didn't want to say it. He was like, man, he got some story about a garage or something. I don't know. He was like, he got it tatted right on him. And uh, man, I reached out to you like the first game that next year. And man, you and your mom just showed me love. And I was kind of tentative because, you know, your story is a, it's a real story. It ain't no fluff, powder puff piece. Uh, so just talk to me about, you know, what it was like for you linking with me and just telling your story and letting the, you know, the world know your truth of what you've been through to get to where you were at. Yeah, at first, I mean, it's a sensitive subject, but it's like, I want to let kids understand and, you know, so other people might go through worse or go through the same situation. So I'm all about, that's what, another reason I stayed at Livingston. I'm all about trying to, the next generation, trying to affect them and show them that it could be done out of any situation. So it was kind of touchy at first, but you my guy, you always show me love. And my mom was just like, it's, it's time to let people know. And a lot of people like, um, like from my city and, and different things, they don't even know what was going on at the time. Cause I kept it in like, a lot of my coaches I played for, a lot of my friends, like nobody knew except for views. Like you, like right Nick, like you was close, close. Like my friend Lions, I met him in the garage, you know what I'm saying, at that place. So besides him, you know, nobody really knew until we put it out, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my teammates knew because it was tatted on me and they always asked like, why you got the house on you? Why you got the house on you? You know what I'm saying? But besides that, it was kind of touchy to speak on because before I was probably like 
before I came to college, I couldn't even talk about it without, you know, getting upset or just breaking down, you know what I'm saying? So just the fact that I broke through my situation and got to where we got to, it just felt like it was time to, to let it out. Yeah, man, and that's crazy because, you know, once we linked to shoot it, I had no thought of that. I mean, you, your mom, your brother, and even uh, Miss Denise, y'all were all really open and just y'all let me all the way in. And, I mean, to this day, it's probably the thing I'm the most proud of that I've done with HBCU Game Day. You ever felt what the garage flow felt like? Imagine sleeping there. Old pool room, that's the road we stayed on when we stayed in the garage. I used to let my mom and my little brother had a couch, I had a floor, but that's where it all started at. The world had been swept from underneath. Our feet. And we kind of hit rock bottom at one point, just sleeping on the floor, you know, not eating a lot. See where we at now, see the success he's having. Them long nights, them cold nights, that's what made me. That's how I be known when I go against certain guys. Like, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't go through that. So you ain't built like that. He's not the tallest, he's not the biggest, but every time we get on the court against anybody else, he dominates. Anywhere there was a ball or a basket, that's what Roger was. It did not matter. Basketball, the only thing that got me through it really, no matter how good I play, they always, he's too small, he's too small. That garage could have broke us. That garage could have made us anything, but it, it made us stronger. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What? The breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee in a disagreement. Now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I. Welcome back to the Fast Break, everybody. Wally Pitt, I'm here with Roger Ray. Raj, let's talk a little bit more about those CIAA rivalries. The one that sticks out for me from the tournament to the regular season was Livingstone against Bowie, which is unconventional. It's a north-south matchup. But talk to me a little bit about how Livingstone and Bowie got to be a rivalry from the time you were at uh, Livingstone. Uh, I mean, the tournament's definitely, but how I remember it was kind of different, too, because my first game against Bowie was around the time where, like, freshman year, where I wasn't playing at all. We went in there and got our mouth toe out. And I remember getting in like, only got in probably like the last five minutes, but I had like 10 points, you know. I was, you know, hey, I get in, I don't care how much we down, but I'm going hard. So we, you know what I'm saying? I, I, that was one of the memory games, because after that, that was kind of like the turning point for me, as far as like getting on the court. But yeah, every year in the tournament, it's like I couldn't get over that hump. We kept losing the boy, we kept losing the boy. They kept me a lot of summers in solid period. They kept me with the hometown a lot, just cause I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta get to that next level. I couldn't never get over that. We couldn't never get over that hump as a team, me and the twins. So there's like, that that was one of the craziest rivalries. And then being at Liverstone, you don't got just one rivalry. You got about four, five schools all the time. You know, so you got Winston, you got John C. Smith, you got Bowie, you got Shaw, you got St. Norris. So it was like, that Bowie matchup was like one for the ages because it's like it's a different, every time it's a different story. You know what I'm saying? They were strong and then we ended up getting them at the end my last two years. But they're probably one of the better teams I played against as far as like being gritty and tough. Like they were, I told Twin the other day, you know, he's at High Point now. He was like, you know, Bowie was bearing a lot of D1 teams just because athleticism and that grit, like just like that, how hard they played. You know what I'm saying? So they, def they, they definitely was a hard matchup, made me better and pushed me every year. I'm in New Trent Gym on the campus of Livingstone College for some early season North-South CIAA hoops, and boy did I pull up in Salisbury on the right night. Livingstone versus Bowie, a possible CIAA championship preview, and if you've never been to New Trent, the Blue Bear Den gets rowdy. Now, Bowie was picked to win the CI North, and they got gunners like the top of a military Humvee. And senior guard Juwan Smith came down ready to square up with preseason all CIAA guard Roger Ray. Now, Ray, the Elmore Twins, and the rest of the LC squad were picked to finish first in the CIAA South. And these teams have knocked one another out of the CIAA tournament the past two seasons. Basically, it always goes down when the Bulldogs and Blue Bears link up. And you can go ahead and add this one to the list of classic Bowie versus Livingstone matchups. And I done told you Bowie got most shooters to happy hour in Cancun, right? They go off the rebound, start the break, pull up, splash. Bulldogs went 9 for 16 from beyond the arc in the first half. That's that Bulldog efficiency. But this is that Blue Bear swag. Roger Ray gets the loose ball and finds twin. Lydell Elmore in the open court for the Chris Weber around the way, cock it back, throw it down and raise the roof. And if you like that, here's a little alley to go with that oop. This one is Roger Ray to the other twin, Navar Elmore. But the Bulldogs, they just stick to the script. Break the press, pull up, 
knock it down, repeat. It's not that flashy, but it gets the job done. Bowie goes into the half up 14, 44 to 30. Now the second half was just like the first. Does LC stand for Livingstone College or Lob City? Roger Ray with another oop to Lydell Elmore. Then it's Ray with the defense. He gets the steal, pushes the rock, and it's Roger the twin again. This time it's the dazzling no look over the shoulder for the scoop shot and one. Blue Bears cut the lead down to seven. But Bowie gets it right back to 12. Cameron Hayes. Elijah Epps getting it done in the paint. Then it's Jawan Smith knocking down the three. Bowie was in control, but here comes Livingstone. Roger Ray bangs in a three. Then he finds Lydell Elmore for yet another throw it up and dunk it down. Then it's LC with the crispy ball movement. It ends up with a Martell Hanley and one layup, and the Blue Bears got the deficit down to two. But Bowie back though, Jawan Smith misses the jumper, but Saquon Jamison got his back with the tip in. Then it's Mr. Magic Don Juan Smith with the voila up and under lay in. Bowie's back up five with four minutes left to play. But Lydell Elmore gets a bucket in the paint. So does Roger Ray. And then Elmore free throw later, and the ball game's all tied up. Until Jawan Smith gets himself another tough lay in, and Bowie's back up too. But then Malik Smith hits a jumper in the paint that ties the game back up with under a minute left to play, and I'm out of breath just talking about it. It's going down to the wire in Salisbury, and the Blue Bears got the ball with a chance to win. Roger Ray gets trapped trying to drive the lane. He finds Martell Hanley on the wing, driving right, shoots the floater with the left, and it's all cash like a fist full of 20s. Blue Bears up 70 to 68 with 2.5 seconds left. They had the AD and the feds out there trying to keep the students back. Keys was jingling in old buddy's ear. One guy in the crowd had clearly gone live. The Bulldogs tossed the inbound heave that goes off the air vent on the ceiling and LC gets the dub over Bowie 70 to 68. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular. In the CIAA tournament, it's win or go home for every team in the bracket, no matter their seed. And with each year building on to the next, the tourney can forge a unique rivalry that can only exist by one team ending the other season. Enter Bowie State and Livingstone College. It's crazy we matched up every year since I've been, you know, at Livingstone. It just built a robbery and I'm just glad that God helped me get over that hump. You know what I'm saying? We went home two years, we got back to it, we kept the faith, and then now we sent him home two years. Use the word rivalry. You know, we we just there's a super respect for them. He's always had talented teams. We've always been talented. And we've played at different levels in this tournament, first round, semifinals, finals. So it's just, you know, there's a healthy, healthy, healthy respect there. Separated by 378 miles and in opposing divisions, this isn't the typical makeup of a conference rivalry. But if you pull back the curtain of the CIAA tournament, you'll see two schools that have faced off in close battles in each of the last three years. 2018 saw Bowie beating LC by three in the semifinals. And in the same round in 2019, the Blue Bears beat the Bulldogs by four. And in the regular season, Livingstone needed a buzzer beater to get by Bowie at home in Salisbury. Now, it's a quarterfinal matchup between the Conference Player of the Year and Livingstone's Roger Ray and all CIAA forward from Bowie, Saquon Jamison. And just like the majority of their careers, they were staring down one another with their seasons on the line. Bowie darted out to an early nine point lead behind hard-nosed defense, knocked down three point shooting, and even a little bit of showtime as Kanai Coles gets the alley oop from Juwan Smith. But Ray and the Blue Bears start to close the gap. Ray gets the steal and a layup. Then a crucial four point play to get his team back within two. And the intensity of this tournament rivalry was on full display. 
And when Malik Smith hit this three at the halftime buzzer to give the Blue Bears a one point lead, it was obvious that we had another Livingstone Bowie Tourney Classic on our hands. And after the break, LC took that one point lead and made it 12. Lydell Elmore showing off with a big dunk. Then he gets the lob from Roger Ray and slams it home. Then it's Ray from three. And if there's one thing you can count on from a Livingstone Bowie tournament game, it's that when one team gets a big lead, the other one is about to come back. Saquon Jameson gets the tip in. Then the mid-range pull up and the game is tied at 51. Bowie's Dexter Turner drains the three. Roger Ray counters with a big and one layup. And for every Bulldog bucket down the stretch, there was a Blue Bear basket waiting on the other end. We all knew someone had to lose, but for most of the second half, it looked like they may go back and forth all day. This dunk by Johans Fleming made it a three-point Bowie lead with four minutes left in the game. This floater by Roger Ray gave LC the lead back with under two minutes left to play. Ray looking for the lob to Navarre Elmore. Elmore gets fouled, knocks them both down, and Livingstone is up five. The keys are out. And it's feeling over. But you better wait till the buzzer for all that when LC and Bowie lock up in the tournament. Roger Ray misses a free throw late. Bowie gets the board and Juwan Smith pulls up from a couple steps in from half court and nails it. Bowie down two with 10 seconds left to play. But Cameron Carpenter ices it from the line and Livingstone advances 74 to 70. But there were no celebrations after this win. Because they have just over 24 hours to prepare for another ride. The Rams of Winston-Salem State University. We felt like um, last game against them, we let one slip away. But, you know what I'm saying, we'd rather have that win around the time right now. So, it's a rivalry, but we don't want to do too much talk. We're going to let Thursday night take care of itself. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular. Breeze. What was it like for you trying to go through the draft process during COVID? And like, how did you just keep your head on straight? You know, how'd you keep focused to try to keep going forward? Um, just understand everything that come with what I'm trying to do. Like I understand, like I and I and I was thankful for them guys that they got to where they went because they're paving the way, just like I'm trying to pave the way. But I always felt like I'm just the one that could bust that door down because I just had, I just, I just feel like I have what I like did. Like any anything they lack, and I feel like I have it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like it was tough. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta know what's in, what's in yourself. You gotta know who you are. You gotta get closer to God. And I just use this time to develop and not look at it like okay. Maybe God is telling me I still have some stuff to work on. So I'm just trying to develop better spiritually, you know what I'm saying, mentally. And then I was kind of happy in a way because I got to spend time with my little brothers. I've been away from my little brother since Kennedy Charter. That was my last year of high school. And I went to prep school after that. So I've been in Charlotte to since for six, seven years. You know what I'm saying? So just getting to spend time with them, watching my little brother, you know what I'm saying, become number one running back in the state. Then my, you know, so I got a baby brother, three years old, had to help raise him. So. Getting to spend time with them was just was just everything for me, and staying focused at the same time. And I got to learn people. I mean, um, I meet a lot of different people. We're doing music now, so it was just like it was a hard road, but it's just like you know the purpose. Like you don't know the goal. Like we don't came this far. Like why turn back now? You know what I'm saying? We we already been through all the hard part, and then so and then I'm looking at it like I was telling my agent. Or if we miss this opportunity, people just don't know me. That's all it is. That's the only difference. Like, I ain't get to try out and get cut. I ain't go this place to get cut or get put on team. I just ain't got the opportunity yet. So you just got to keep working for the opportunity. Then you know what Corona and COVID is just still a tough situation. So it's like, it's basically like I'm still be a rookie coming in this, this draft class. And then like you said, the playing field level, they can't act like the, the talent level is so different now. It's not because it's like, even the top five recruits can't get a win for you at Kentucky no more. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, it been getting, you know, so I've seen it coming a long time ago, it been like getting watered down. 
You know what I'm saying? Even to be real, like the team we had at Livingstone, like athletic wise, you know what I'm saying? We was kind of D1. You got 6'9, 6'10, then we had Kenny, 6'10, then you had me, then you had Malik, 6'7. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, all right. And then I came from Raleigh where everybody went D1. And everybody, you know what I'm saying, was that guy. So I've been playing against these these people. So it was just like, it was it was tough. It's a challenge, but it's just like it's what you got to do. And I understand I'm make I'm doing something for a bigger purpose, not for me. It's for kids that come after me. So if I can make it, I can help their situation way better. I can make sure they can get looks right away. I can make sure they, you know, what I'm saying have scouts and different things that they gain. You know, what I'm saying I'm just trying to change the mold because it shouldn't be after we got to go to y'all schools or we have to go to a PWI just to get seen, or you have to be on this just to get seen. You know, what I'm saying like football. Lenore, your boy went from Lenore Ryan. You know what I'm saying? Killing it. The boy from V State, the Jets killing it. So it's like, it, it shouldn't, it don't make sense. It's just a double standard, but you know what I'm saying? We trying to get around that. And that's my thing I'm trying to push. It's like, I see it's like a little social injustice because it's like, you know what I'm saying? We talk about it with the racism, but then we do that. If you go to a HBCU and play basketball, you basically say your career over. You know what I'm saying? Unless you want to go overseas. And, and that's not right. So, you know what I'm saying? We fighting for a different purpose. Yeah, man. I mean, that's a whole lot of game from Roger Ray. I, sh I should be making y'all pay $9.99 pay-per-view for this interview. But, you know, we got you covered. HBCU Game Day. Fast break on Aspire TV every week. Roger Ray, hey, I appreciate you for sharing your time and just for everything, man. One of, one of my favorite people I know in X amount of years, man, we're going to be toasting up at your CIAA Hall of Fame. Meet, you know what I mean? We're going to be old and gray at the tournament. That's that's what this HBCU thing is, man. You you make these connections and you build these relationships and it's forever. And um, I just, I thank you for letting me in and man, here's to the future. I know, I know we're going to see future NBA uh, player, Roger Ray. Let's go ahead and put that in the air, man. I appreciate you and uh, we're going to catch up with you soon. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate you, Wally. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee, and a disagreement. Now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I'll be cooking up because then they think we be even. But I know, look, this, this, so I never seen it. Nah, what do you know? Who put on the show? I love the fans. Block this shot to the 40th row. And if I'm shooting, it don't matter if it's threes or it's two. It's all buckets. Yeah, I got a bunch of leaks on the roof, and now I'm real focused, real, real focused.